Hi guys, our new unit asks this essential question. How do we make use of natural materials? In order to answer this question, the first thing we have to think about is what do we mean by natural? Natural to a lot of students sounds like it has to come right out of nature. Like you go into the forest and there's trees there and there's water there and those things are natural to you. And that's true. But nature is what everything is made of, if you think about it. For example, this glass here is actually made from sand. A lot of people don't realize that to make glass you heat sand, it sort of fuses together to form glass. You have to be, it has to be really, really hot. And when you do that, you take something out of nature and make it something man-made. But if you really think about it, glass is still a natural substance. All substances are sort of natural originally. We might manipulate them and change them so that they're useful to us, but that doesn't mean that they didn't come out of nature. Now, the third picture down here is the molecular structure of sand when it has been turned to glass. After you heat sand up, it forms these sort of soccer ball shaped boxes here. I guess, what are these? These are hexagons, right? Maybe they're pentagons? And that shape has a lot of empty space in the middle. And this is part of the reason why light shines right through glass. And yet, glass is a solid at room temperature. Both of those things make glass useful. So this whole unit is about properties of matter and how we use the properties that matter has to make decisions about what to use to build different things. The man-made world is all about making things convenient, convenient and useful for we humans. So a glass is there for us to make drinking easier. Or the glass in your window pane is there to make it so you can get light coming in, but you can trap the air inside of the building so that you don't get too hot or too cold. And the material glass is chosen to do that because it doesn't make sense to use wood for that. So this is the whole point of this unit, is deciding what materials are best for which situations. And to do that, we really have to start looking at the properties of matter. The properties that matter has depends on how the particles are arranged. Here's a cityscape. This is actually the city of Flint, Michigan, which has been in the news lately. If you look at this city, you might think there's no natural materials in it at all, except for maybe the trees. But all of these materials came out of nature and then were turned into something useful. You've got the glass right here in the upper corner. You've got this car, which is built nowadays. Cars have metal in them, but they also have quite a bit of plastic. So that's the structure of plastic down there. And it's interesting, I talked about how glass has this structure that makes it very see-through. Well, plastics have a structure that makes them stretchy and bendable so that it's easy to make them go into whatever shape you want, and that has to do with the length of the chain of atoms that makes up plastic. The bridge in Flint, that's the bridge right here, which has a cool little sign on it that says Motor City, that bridge is mostly made of steel, and steel has an arrangement like this. It makes it look like it's got a lot of empty space, like the glass does, but you have to imagine that there's layer upon layer upon layer on top of that. So that's kind of like a thin slice of steel. And steel is really, really strong. Why is it so strong? Well, because the way that the atoms are arranged in steel, they actually form really tight bonds that form these little triangles, and triangles are extremely strong. And so the way that these atoms are actually bonded together determines the strength that steel has. The last one, all the way over here on the right-hand side, is what concrete, like in this pavement, looks like. Concrete is actually a complicated, heterogeneous mixture. So you can see there's lots of different particles in there, all different sizes and shapes, different colors, and they're not arranged evenly. So that's a heterogeneous mixture. But concrete has lots of really cool properties, which make it really easy to build with. So you can get it in dry form and then transport it to where you need to go, add water, and then it can fill any shape you want. That's an extremely useful property of concrete. So the branch of science I'm talking about is called material science because it's the science of materials and how we use those to build our world. So here are the things that material science is concerned with. 
And I know this is a lot of words, but I really want you to look at these words and think about what they mean. First is the understanding of how the structure and bonding of a material controls its properties. That's what we just looked at, looked at with all those pictures, is how the different particles are arranged, what their structure is, and therefore how those particular arrangements of atoms are useful. Then the next thing is understanding how the properties of a material can be controlled by how you process the material. So for example, sometimes how quickly you heat something or how much heat you use can determine what the final properties will be. So concrete is a great example of that because when they mix concrete, the amount of water they use and how long it takes for the concrete to dry will determine how strong it is and even what color it is and what texture it is. So processing is part of understanding the materials you're working with. And then finally, material selection for a wide range of applications. That what this is saying is that material science is, a, is very often about choosing the right material for the right application. What do you need it for? What properties does it need to have? This is going to be coming up very soon as we enter into this unit because we're going to be looking at Flint, Michigan and how choices that were made about the materials used in their water system affected that community. So this is what material scientists do. They start out, they determine what the structure of the materials they're working with is at the molecule and atom level. They measure those properties, and we'll be learning some lab techniques for how you measure the properties of matter. And then they come up with ways, or they devise ways and come up with ways of processing those materials, like how long should we let our concrete sit for? How much water should we add? And then they think about how a material is useful, how it's suited to the purpose it serves and how they can make it better, how they can enhance it for better performance. So as we go through this unit, we're gonna be looking at this. How can Flint, Michigan get safe, affordable water to its residents? And this comes down to the materials that they choose to use in their water system. So we need to learn about water systems and what they're built from. We need to learn about water and what water's structure is. And we need to learn about the potential contaminants that come into play when you build a water system. So that's gonna be a hopefully an interesting and fun learning experience and I'll look forward to seeing you in class.